Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate. Lesson 3.4, What's Going On With The Weather, Part 2. What's the weather like where you are today? Here in Seattle, it's sunny and warm. I even have my door open right now, so you may hear some birds chirping or maybe even a lawnmower during this lesson. For this part of the lesson, you won't need any materials from home. Just follow along with me. Are you ready to do some science? I bet you are. Let's go. Okay, welcome back. Do you remember what we did in the first part of the lesson? We read this book. It's called, What's Going On With The Weather? And it's about a girl named Toby who is moving from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way over to San Francisco, California. So she moved all the way across the country. And she finds out that the weather in these two places is very different. In Boston, she had cold, snowy winters. But after looking at some weather data with her brother, she figures out that San Francisco doesn't have those extreme highs and lows like Boston does. So she can play soccer all year round. So she's very excited about the weather that she's expecting to get in San Francisco. So now we're gonna compare the weather in Boston to the weather in San Francisco by pulling the graphs from the book and looking at them a little closer. This is gonna help us understand more about the climate in the different places. Do you remember what climate is? Tell me. Yeah, climate is the weather in a place over a very long period of time. So if we take a lot of weather data from many years and we look at the patterns of highs and lows and rainy and dry, then we can discover the climate in a place. And by studying the climate is how we're gonna figure out what the best island is for the orangutans in this unit. So let's get back to Boston and San Francisco. I wanna remind you that when most people talk about seasons, they mean like summer, fall, winter, and spring, right? Like if you were talking to a kindergartner about seasons, they would tell you those are the seasons. But we're thinking like meteorologists right now. And meteorologists think about temperature and precipitation when they talk about seasons. So from this point on, we're going to refer to seasons by temperature and precipitation. What words do meteorologists meteorologists use to describe different seasons? Give me some responses that you're thinking of. Are you stuck? I'll give you one. Rainy season might be a word that meteorologists would use to describe one specific season. Can you think of some others? Great ideas. Here are the ones I thought of. The dry season, the cold season, and the hot season. So remember, when we're talking about seasons like meteorologists, we're gonna to refer to them by talking about precipitation, like these two, rainy or dry, or we're gonna talk about seasons using temperature, like hot and cold. Awesome. So let's start with Boston. Boston is the city in Massachusetts that Toby moved from. And Boston has a warm season, which is in June, July, and August. So let's take a look at the graph over here. Do you see June, July, and August? Point to those three months. Do you see that their bars are higher than the rest of the months? So we can tell that that is the warm season. Perfect. Now, does Boston have any cold seasons? See if you can find some places in the graph where the bars are lower. Yeah, January, February and March all look pretty cold. And then over here in November and December, we're seeing those lower temperatures. So Boston does have cold seasons. Awesome. We see that there's cold seasons and warm seasons. Now, this is the graph for San Francisco, which is in California, and it's where Toby moved to. Look at the graph. The pattern looks a lot different. Does San Francisco have warm and cold seasons? I'll give you a minute to look and think. What do you think? San Francisco's graph looks a lot different than Boston's. Boston's goes like this. And San Francisco's kind of goes like this, right across the top. 
So do you see any major differences that would show us a warm or cold season in San Francisco's data? No. Awesome. Now, we've looked at the temperature. Now let's look at the precipitation, which is the other way that meteorologists talk about climate. So we see over here on the left, total precipitation in Boston. I just want you to trace the top of those bars with your finger. Are you ready? I'm going to do the same thing. All right, now I want you to look at the total precipitation in San Francisco and trace those bars with your finger. Are you ready? Which of these two looks like it would have a really rainy season and a really dry season, Boston or San Francisco? San Francisco does, because it has some places where the bars are high and some places where the bars are very low. And that is evidence that there is a rainy season and a dry season. What month appears to be the driest in San Francisco? Can you find it? Yeah, it's July. It looks like it almost doesn't rain at all in July in San Francisco. Look at Boston's precipitation. When we trace it, we see that there's not really a month where there's no rain. It either rains or snows pretty close to the same amount every single month, and we don't see a big dip in precipitation like we do in San Francisco. So that makes sense that Toby would really feel like San Francisco's weather and climate are very different from Boston. All right, we have a new word. It may be a word that you already have in your vocabulary, but I wanna give it a new meaning. Instead of summer, spring, winter, fall, when we think of seasons, I wanna think of seasons as times of year when certain kinds of weather are more common. Seasons help us describe the climate of a place. San Francisco and Boston have different seasons, so we can say that San Francisco's climate is different from Boston's climate. Do you agree? Great. Bar graphs help meteorologists compare seasons and climates in different places and make predictions, which is what meteorology is all about. What are the features of the climate where you live? Think about it for a minute. When is it rainy? When is it dry? Hmm, when is it cold? When is it warm? If you live on the East Coast in a place like New York or Florida or North Carolina, you would probably know that you're expecting to have really hot summers, maybe with thunderstorms. And in the winter, you're going to get cold winters. You might get snow. Uh, you might have to really bundle up. If you live in a place like I live, which is near San Francisco, it's up a little higher, which is Seattle, we're going to have a climate that's more like San Francisco's. We might expect rain more throughout the year, and we might not expect to see such highs and lows in temperature. Have you ever lived in or visited a different climate? If so, how is it different from your climate? Have you ever been to a place that was really tropical or really cold? Think about that and compare it to the climate you live in. We're gonna to continue to compare climates in other parts of the world because this is gonna help prepare us to decide which island has the best climate for the orangutan reserve, which is the point of this whole science unit. Thanks so much for joining me for part two of lesson 3.4, what's going on with the weather. I want you to challenge yourself to be thinking about the weather where you live. Ask an adult who lives in your house to help you find out what the weather's gonna be in the next few days coming up. Is that weather that you would expect for the season that we're in right now? Or is it unusual weather? Hmm, think about it. Until then, I want you to stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Bye.